Great American <laughs> Bash 1990. It's presented a little bit like in Carter 95. Yes. <laughs> it's like a little bit like an old school CD-ROM. It is. The tagline for this is a new revolution. Right. And the thought behind it was, what we will do is we will make it clear that the old NWA WCW, which has not been as successful as WWF, <laughs> right. is going to change. Yes. And pretty much all of the matches in this are between new, versus older stars. Right. So that is the revolution. Um, WCW, as a sort of Southern States promotion, has always loved the livery of the American War of Independence. Oh, my God, yes. It, it's So the opening bit is all sort of on parchment and declarations. There's like matte paintings they've done yeah. of Ric Flair as, and I don't know the American history, but it's sort of like Paul Revere yeah. or whatever. <laughs> it's just, and just... They are shonky as fuck. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. This is the 7th of July. July 1990. <laughs> this is at the Baltimore Arena in Maryland. 10,000 in attendance, mm. which again, you know, hints at the disparity between WWE and WCW at but this still time. But still a chunker, still a chunky crowd. It looks, I mean, it looks like a very full crowd. And it's also got that funny thing that we don't really see in WrestleMania, which is sometimes a mid-volume crowd yeah. uh, of like 10,000. They can make more noise <laughs> than 80,000 people in the stadium. It's just thrilling. What you're going to see here is you're going to basically see a lot of old old people being beaten by the new people. Yes. That's the revolution That's that is the- happening. <laughs> um, will, will that revolution be successful? The answer is no, not, not really. <laughs> what it does is it slightly alienates a lot of the older fans who don't like the young, pretty, or silly characters. Yes. And it doesn't quite bring in the younger <laughs> fans because the characters aren't very well worked out, yeah. relatable, no. and the action can be a bit sort of like violent. <laughs> and not in a sort of fun, cartoony way. It can be a bit of a long grind. Yeah. That you're a bit like... I don't know how I feel about this. As a, as a child, like watching some of these matches, like especially the ones involving the Freebirds, yeah. you just sort of be like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> this is like tramps and hobos <laughs> fighting. This isn't, this isn't fabulous but at all. It, if you had like a guy who lived under a bridge who had found like a Shirley Bassey costume, yeah, and he was fighting another <laughs> tramp who was dressed like in you know, Alvin Stardust, <laughs> you yeah, you'd watch. You'd watch. You'd watch. You would watch. But you'd be scared for it. <laughs> Yeah, you? because they might turn on you. Yeah. Everyone seems heavier. Yeah. The ring looks a little less stable. <laughs> Things just look, have you double-checked that cross bolt? There's one thing I really noticed in this, and it's one of the few events where they use the black canvas yeah. with, I think it's yellow, blue, and black mm. ropes. I mean, that is not much of a colour scheme. It also doesn't match WCW's colour scheme. No. But I thought about it, I thought, it looks good because it looks grimy and it looks sort of like and I was thinking the reason of course it's a black one is you don't have to make sure it's that clean yeah and I think if you're WCW you'd be like where do we clean the rings I'm sure WWF have got their own ring cleaning machine yes Uh, WCW would be like well just gonna have to get the black mat it's just like a goth night club (laughs) Uh, if you ever went to a like a a rock club in the 90s or the the noughties they just never used to they just it just stank of Red Bull on the floors because everything was painted black you never knew what was dirty do you know some of my worst memories of life as a whole were from the bar fly yeah. at about 11 or 10 in the morning after the night before. Gross. And being in those places, it would make you feel like hungover and sick, regardless of what you'd done the night before. Just absolutely the worst hot, sweet smell in the world. Yeah, just, you, you can't clean that stuff out. Uh, so that's what the ring smells like. Yeah. It's just old blood. WCW have invested a bit of money into their product. So they've invested a bit of money into the lighting. Yeah. So you get the, the audience are now lit up which is a very much a WWF invention. And it was, I think, invented pretty much for television. And you can see WCW here have lit the crowd much better than they have before. And what that does, unfortunately, is it shows you who's in the crowd. <laughs> the front row of WCW's new revolution, it's just like a woman in her sort of 70s, and she's yeah. got, like, tinted glasses. She's got that old woman thing of wearing almost like a child's sort of, like, a doll's dress <laughs> with too many frills and bows and things. It just looks sinister. And 
yeah. next to her is just these old men wearing tractor hats, yeah. like John Deere, and big fat little bellies but it's poking a sort of, over it's the a top. sort of thing that you just, as a kid, you just assume that when you're watching Hulk Hogan's New Ultimate Warriors, that everyone who's into wrestling is nine. Yeah. But, like, these had been going to wrestling for, like, the, all of their lives. And they must slightly have watched this, and what, what does Sting have for these people? <laughs> no. What I mean, you know, he comes out with his face painted, and, and he, he goes, ah! <laughs> and, I, and I do not understand or appreciate it. It's so skinny. Again, we talked about this in the nature of pubs. When you take over a pub, yeah. the most important thing to do is to get rid of the old clientele. Yeah. Because you want to make a fresh start. Yeah. And so the old clientele, they hang on. They're like these old men sitting at the bar. They will tut and they will moan. And eventually, one day, you'll turn up and they don't come in. And then you go, good, we can move to the next stage. Yes. And that's like wrestling. They didn't necessarily want to get rid of the older generation who were following wrestling. Mm. But they also didn't didn't want them to look like the face of the audience. So you do begin to see as time goes on, the audience get younger and younger and younger. Yeah. And so you're going from basically your 70s yeah. until you get to the people in their 30s and 40s who are the mm. sort of key demographic to this day. Worth saying as well, just, just again, it's very WCW. They have a little bit of animated credits that come up with all of the stars' faces in. And it's flair and he sort of turns. And it's really well done. You go, okay, they're making a real effort here. Yeah. But when Sting, the biggest star, appears on this floating star you can see he's in the middle of talking when he's doing it and, he, and he's obviously just been they've taken it from a promo and they've just not got him to do it specially and it's that sort of thing that you would never have got in WWF yeah. they would never have had the thing of just going well he's not here so let's take it from somewhere else they'd have said get him here yeah you know so it's just thing sort of his big moment is him going rah, 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 rah. Like, <laughs> turns around really cheap our commentators are Bob Cordell and Jim Ross again I looked at them it is just impossible Possible to work out their ages. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, they, it's, they could be anything from late. Certainly, Jim Ross, early thirties yeah, to mid sixties. I, 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 after John Tender, I'm just I don't I don't even try anymore. To be honest, I don't <laughs> even try and guess how old everyone is. Yeah. It's insane. Um, it. We kick off basically Gary Michael Capetta, who they call the world's most dangerous announcer, Gary Michael <laughs> Capetta, and. <sighs> His first thing, they haven't put the mic on. <laughs> yes, so he la, misses la. the word the. So he just goes, champion of the, you know. Yeah, oh. It's just like, guys. Yeah, <laughs> only dangerous, Pete, if you are very allergic to fuck ups. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, let's go up to the world's most dangerous announcer, Gary Michael Capetta. His first contest in the Great American Bash. And they don't ever stop talking in this and the last bit of uh, WCW I watched about professional football. Oh, absolutely. They love talking about legitimate sport, they pointing do. out that their stars are not legitimate sportsmen. Junior College Football All-American. Played football at University of Tennessee for Johnny Majors. He was a real horse in college, attacking the former Syracuse University All-American, Mike Rotunda. Played seven years of pro football. As you know, he graduated from college with like a 3.78 grade average. That's pretty good when you figure a four is perfect. Got a degree in marketing, Bob. But they have a big thing about going in the WWE they're cartoon characters but our guys legitimate sportsmen right. and if all these people are legitimate sportsmen then what does that make this that's right a legitimate, <laughs> a legitimate sport. sport not like your WWF they they were wise to do that because for years they did have the reputation of being the, the wrestling fans sort of company if you like yeah. because the matches even the matches on this in 1990 I mean at the same time that this is happening you've got SummerSlam 90 yeah. which is Hulk Hogan versus Earthquake and Ultimate War versus Rick Rude in mm. a cage but what you're seeing is matches that are they're not enjoyable to watch mm. and all of the undercard of SummerSlam 90 with the exception of I think and this is off the top of my head there's a Heart Foundation demolition match that's right. good the vast majority of the matches in WWF were going to be plodding slow and they didn't really have any thrills mm. every single match on this card is good objectively good yeah. and if any of these had been on a WWF card at the time people would be going it's one of the great matches that <laughs> WWE put on in that period yeah, yeah but and so WCW, you knew that when you watched one of their pay-per-views, when you went to one of their shows, you were going to see better wrestling than anywhere else in America. Mm. And it's still a good watch. <laughs> it, it just it, Oh, before we get there, though, we've got, little, we've got a little uh, Gordon and Harley Race interview. Oh, don't we just. And Harley says, if Flair is not up for the test. <laughs> <laughs> and it really made me laugh. Yeah. Just like I said, if Flair is not up for the test... He may be a beaten man here tonight. The problem with this promo is he comes out and he's putting over Flair. Yeah. And he's putting over the main event. And he's Harley Race. He's a huge name. Yeah. I mean, 
past his prime. But what he's doing there is he sort of couches it in rather than going Flair is the man he is going to beat Sting that is what he should say he's a mm. bad guy yeah. he does all that counting where he says if Ric Flair is not up to the task he might be a beaten man it's, if he's not up to the task he might be a beaten man a lot man. of logic gets there yeah. it's just sort of like it's, like it's pre-recorded it's like, I haven't decided who wins. Yeah. I have not decided and who he says I've made a lot of predictions in wrestling and a lot of them have come true <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like I've made a lot of predictions I, I, I haven't obviously got them all right it's like Harley mate think of me as the wrestling version of Martin Financial Advisor who's yeah, on Martin telly. Martin Lewis. Martin Lewis. On the one hand and on the other. <laughs> Don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's definitely going to be Sting unless Sting cannot bring himself to the task <laughs> of beating Ric Flair. Ric Flair cannot be beaten on any night but some nights can be. He can be. be. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, he's got a big perm on here. Harley oh, Race. it's a Properly lovely, perm. Yeah. Absolute He chops. looks like Richard Simmons. In this, the, um, the, the 1980s sort of keep fit aerobics guy. Is he guy. still with us? Are you sick and tired of boring lookalike exercise videos with synthesized elevator music and a lineup of leotard clad Stepford wives? Well, if you are, honey, have I got the cure for you!